Welcome back. Alleged serial killer Bruce MacArthur is scheduled to appear in court in the next week, charged in eight murders. Now, most of the media coverage has focused on the search for body parts and who the missing men were. But there's another story yet to be told involving a different police target. And a warning, what W5's Avery Haynes is about to reveal may be disturbing to some of you. We have multiple murder scenes identified through dental records, identified through fingerprints. It is one of the most horrifying crimes in Canadian history. Eight men in a span of seven years vanished without a trace from what they believed was a safe haven, the vibrant gay village in downtown Toronto. Skanda Navaratnam, last seen in the area of Church and Wellesley. Abdul Basir Faizi, who was reported missing to Peel Regional. 58-year-old Majid Kahan. Sarush Mahmoudi. Kirushna Kumar Kanagarat. 44-year-old Salim Essen, missing from the area of Young Street. Dean Lissowick. 49-year-old Andrew Kinsman. What kind of case is it? Uh, it it's, it, it's a serial killer. Bruce MacArthur, a well-known resident of the gay village, is accused of killing and dismembering all eight men. His trial is likely years away, but an exclusive W5 investigation has uncovered new details of Suspect Zero, the first prime suspect in the mystery of the missing men of the village. His name, James Alex Brunton, a married father living a quiet life in the small city of Peterborough, Ontario, about an hour and a half drive northeast of Toronto. The retired hospital technician was an active volunteer with local boys hockey teams. Brunton would eventually be ensnared in a global police investigation. It all started with the disappearance of this man, Skanda Navratnam, in 2010. Described by his friends as happy-go-lucky and charming, Skanda was last seen leaving a nightclub in the heart of the gay village. His friend, Doug Dubay, was one of the last people to see him alive. What was going through your mind in those early days of Skanda's disappearance? I knew it was bad from the beginning. It's one thing to not necessarily just answer your calls or answer your emails or, or something to that effect. When we saw the missing posters, we noticed that something now doesn't feel right. Skanda's friends may have thought it didn't feel right, but for Toronto police, there was no evidence of foul play. Detective Sergeant Hank Nsinga recounts the beginning stages of what would become a gruesome investigation. Skanda Navaratnam disappeared in 2010. What lengths did Toronto police go to to try to find out what happened to this guy? Missing persons, a lot of the times, do disappear without a trace. Um, it's not always something nefarious. Uh, hoping that, okay, well, let me check his cellular phone records, check his social media. You're just looking at everything and hoping that something comes to fruition out of that. Was there a fear that something nefarious, as you say, had happened to Skanda? Well, that's always something to consider. Uh, quite frankly, we didn't know what had happened to Skanda. We just did not know what had happened to him. Two years pass and a phone call is made to Toronto Police. A phone call that changes everything and raises the prospect that Skanda may have been murdered. You receive uh, an, an outrageous, horrendous tip that comes in from Switzerland. The tip came in through the local division that was investigating the Navaratnam occurrence. And now all of a sudden, this missing persons case becomes a potential homicide. Uh, as the homicide squad, uh, we said, well, we better jump in on this investigation because as far-fetched as it may sound, as the original tip may sound, it looks like there might be some, some substance to it. In 2012, Project Houston was born, an unprecedented task force working on a harrowing theory that came from a tip halfway around the world, a tip that turned one missing person case into a possible murder investigation. It wasn't until we were probably four weeks into that project where we said, well, hold on a second. Uh, not only is Navaratnam missing, but so is Abdul Faizi, so is Majid Kayan. This investigation points you to a man in Peterborough, James Alex Brunton. Right. We wanted to determine whether he could be responsible for uh, 
the murder of Skanda Navaratnam, if Skanda Navaratnam had been murdered, or was he involved in the disappearances of any of the other individuals as well. Along with postering and canvassing the streets of Toronto, investigators had eyes and ears on Brunton in Peterborough for months. It was a massive investigation, uh, as you can imagine. You can't have this individual who may be, may be involved in a murder still active uh, without keeping an eye on him. So we had surveillance on him 24 hours a day, seven days a week. During the course of Project Houston, police discovered that their prime suspect in a potential murder investigation was hiding some very dark secrets. James Alex Brunton had secretly been videotaping teenage hockey players as they changed and showered in Peterborough arenas. Between 2009 and 2012, he was also involved in a bizarre online relationship with a 15-year-old boy in Colorado. In exchange for a total of $3,500, the boy would send Brunton increasingly violent nude photos of himself. Even more disturbing, the teen signed this contract agreeing that when he turned 20, he would be tortured, butchered, and eaten by Brunton. Toronto police joined forces with the FBI in Colorado to track down the boy. Special Agent Alex Zappi collected evidence from the teen's computer. There was, uh, uh, with an ongoing email communication and uh, sending pictures or in videos of, of uh, himself, the, the victim that would constitute child pornography. I think this one is one of the most uh, strange, uh, ir irregular type of, of cases that, that I've worked. So just what was the tip that launched Project Houston? Well, it originated here in Bern, Switzerland. A claim so disturbing, so grotesque, that Toronto police flew here to interview the tipster. W5 tracked the man all the way to this small trailer where he lives near the Swiss capital. The tip involved cannibalism. Marcus Dubok, a former government employee who had been looking for cannibals online, told us what he told police back then, that he believed a killer was stalking men in Toronto. And it's because of a relationship he had developed with James Alex Brunton on a cannibal fantasy website. Uh, chef mate, uh, he, he named himself chef mate in, in that forum. Chef mate? Chef mate. What did he tell you about his experiences with cannibalism? He told me, come, uh, hell yes, come on over to, to Canada. Then I asked him uh, whether he has uh, experience with cannibalism. And then he responded to me, uh, it's just say for now that I have experience. In their chats, Brunton also said he preferred men. This was in the spring of 2012. Believing he had connected with a real cannibal, Marcus Dubok began furiously searching Toronto missing persons files online to see if Brunton really had moved beyond the fantasy realm and into reality. So you think, I'm going to start looking to see if there are any gay men missing in Toronto? Yes. It typed in uh, missing gay men, Toronto. And the first, uh, the first hit was this uh, missing person out of Skanda Navaratnam. Um, who was gone missing uh, September 6th, 2010. The discovery of this missing person alert posted on Facebook by Skanda Navratnam's friends was enough for Marcus to call police. We were pointed in the direction of uh, cannibalism and the fetish of cannibalism uh, on an international scale. Toronto police take it so seriously that you send a team to Switzerland to interview him. What can you tell me about, about that mission? If someone is calling you and telling you that a suspect has confessed a murder to them, you better interview them. And we could substantiate it. He talks about someone confessing to the murder of someone from the gay village. And look, we've got this missing individual from the gay village. So we better get this guy interviewed. Skanda's friend, Doug Dubay, had no idea until he was told by W5 all these years later just what the working police theory was when Project Houston was first launched. No, I didn't know that. I... No. I, I'm sorry, that's really heavy for me. 
dark and twisted online community. These kind of interests pop up in different kink forums. That caters to an evil taste. Serial killers are almost always hunters. When W5 continues. In 2012, a massive Toronto Police Task Force was investigating a sickening theory that was never shared with the public, that a cannibal was stalking men in Toronto. Their prime suspect, James Alex Brunton, a retiree living with his wife in Peterborough, Ontario, northeast of Toronto. Brunton was a member of a cannibal fantasy website. In chats with a Swiss man named Marcus Dubach, he made horrifying claims. Dubok was so disturbed, he called police, who almost immediately set up a task force called Project Houston. Investigators traveled to Switzerland to interview the tipster, and W5 has followed that trail. If you're wondering why Toronto police took this sensational theory so seriously, it's because Marcus Dubach has done this before. In fact, just a couple of months previously, he helped police in Europe capture a cannibal in Slovakia. Dubach's foray into the online cannibal world came at a challenging time in his life. He was contemplating suicide and made the bizarre decision to sign up with a fantasy cannibal forum. In April 2011, he placed an ad. So when you put this ad up on mm -hmm. this website, what were you offering? Myself as, as meat. I, I told uh, I wanted to die. I, I didn't really believe, the, believe that somebody would uh, respond to that, uh, that ad. He was willing to sacrifice himself as meat. And a man in Slovakia was interested in what Dubok had to offer. He even sent Marcus evidence that he had done this before. So you got seven emails. Mm -hmm. uh, and one email with seven pictures. Can you show me the pictures? OK. A warning. Dubok agreed to show W5 those deeply disturbing photos. We have blurred the images. They are simply too stomach-churning to show. So we see here. The... Oh, god. The composed body. Wait. Sorry, what is that? I have no idea. It's in the wood. You see the, the leaves here and... Um... It looks like two limbs in a yeah. baking pan. Oh, the... right. This is a foot clear cut off at, mm -hmm. the, at the ankle. This is a breast that's been lopped off and put in a frying pan. Marcus immediately called local police who set up a sting outside the man's cabin in the woods in Slovakia. They used a faked meeting with Marcus as bait. A dramatic shootout ensued, and the suspect, a man named Mate Kirko, died two days later in hospital. Photos of Kirko were later discovered with missing women, as well as dismembered and cooked human remains. What, what goes through your mind when you know this? It's completely crazy. I, can't, I couldn't believe it's so, uh, it's so disturbing. You can't forget it, what you have seen, what you have experienced. Believing he had some sort of dark knack for hunting cannibals, Marcus delved back into the macabre online world. And that's how he connected with James Alex Brunton in Peterborough. As shocking as these websites might sound, they're surprisingly common. The forums for these more bizarre sexual interests like cannibalism is fascinating because they're hugely prevalent. Forensic psychiatrist Dr. Cynthia Baxter specializes in violent sex offenders. She's based in Calgary, Alberta. We see, you know, a fair number of these kind of interests pop up in different um, so-called kink forums um, and sometimes in the dark web. Dr. Baxter says there are two clear types of characters who present themselves on websites like these, hunters and howlers howlers. The goal is not to actually get the prey. A howler is someone who wants to convince everybody that they're a hunter. Uh, and so in order to do that, they want to draw attention to themselves. They want to convince people that they're bad, that they're evil, that they're dangerous. But it's the hunters who are the real threat. 
Serial killers are almost always hunters. That's how they get away with it for so long. A hunter, when they're online, uh, they're probably not going to be really upfront to start with that they want to assault you or, uh, you know, sort of harm you in any way. They're going to want to get your trust and then they can victimize them later once they've sort of uh, had a rapport going. It turns out James Alex Brunton, the man from Peterborough who was suspect zero in the hunt for a possible serial killer, was only a howler. Can you talk a little bit about the interception that you did in trying to set him up or create a situation where he was being given an opportunity to carry through on his purported fantasy or possible desire to actually kill and eat a man? Uh, we did have multiple uh, undercover operations uh, in play. Uh, we were uh, conducting things not only in person but online uh, and ultimately it was through one of those undercover operations where we were finally satisfied that he was in fact not responsible for killing anybody. Police determined that James Alex Brunton had nothing to do with any of the disappearances or the murders. And his cannibalism claims were just fantasy. But Brunton was convicted of making, possessing, and distributing child pornography. The charges were in connection with his twisted online relationship with a 15-year-old boy in the US and with secretly videoing hockey players in the 2000s. W5 recently approached Brunton in Peterborough. Mr. Brunton, Avery Haynes from W5. We have a couple of questions for you. Just I'm wondering, not interested, okay? Just wondering why Toronto police believe that you were a serial killer back during the, the beginning of Project Houston. I don't know. Do you know anything about the tip from Switzerland, the man you were conversing with online, claiming that you had killed men and eaten men? Was that the truth? No. You, this was something you were just... This is something you were just playing. Anything to say to the to the boys that you secretly videotaped at the hockey arena? Anything to say to the young man who you entered a contract in, making him promise to be killed and a sex slave for you and eaten by you? There's no truth whatsoever to that. There's no truth to the fact that you had a contract with this man, this young man? Mr. Brunton, you have a chance to explain yourself, Mr. Brunton. Even though he denies it now, Brunton did have a contract with a 15-year-old American boy. FBI Special Agent Alex Zappi in Grand Junction, Colorado, says that boy was left deeply traumatized. He was scared. He was, he was a young kid and got wrapped up in a um, pretty um, strange online uh, environment. And uh, once he realized how involved it was, especially with the FBI and, and Toronto Police, um, I think it, it it brought it home that today this is this is really serious. He was able to to really see where he was uh, vulnerable and how someone took advantage of him. Walking out of court in 2014, Brunton pleaded guilty to a total of seven charges for child pornography and was sentenced to time served, which was 10 months in jail. He was also put on three years probation. Uh, once we had eliminated Brunton as a potential suspect, we're, we're right back at square one where we've got these missing persons and we don't know what has happened to them. The missing persons cases were kept open, but the task force was quietly disbanded. And then, four years later, more men started disappearing. When Selene Essen went missing, uh, and then Andrew Kinsman shortly afterwards went missing, that's when I said, okay, we've got something is still going on uh, in, in the city. And it's like a movie plot. Uh, something's gone on and it, it's quieted down for a few years and here we go, it, it's, it's happening again. More than five years after a cannibal tip sparked the creation of Project Houston, Toronto police arrested Bruce MacArthur. And while that tip was unfounded, it made police consider that the missing men cases were linked. When even more men started disappearing, police already had it in their minds that a serial killer may have been targeting gay men. That outlandish tip about a cannibal ring in some ways played a role in the arrest all these years later of Bruce MacArthur. Would you agree with that? A lot of the officers involved in, in Project Prism were ultimately involved in Project Houston as well. So uh, 
I think it did play a, a part in ultimately the successful outcome of uh, Project PRISM. But the tip from Switzerland may come back to haunt Toronto police when the MacArthur case finally gets to trial. Is there any way that Bruce MacArthur's lawyers could use this as part of the defense to say, well, you had 100 guys working on this and you thought it was that guy. Now you can't say that it's, it's MacArthur. Absolutely. He, uh, he could be raised as an alternate suspect. Would that be enough to raise reasonable doubt in the juror's mind? Well, it's certainly something that could be looked at by a defense lawyer. Doug Dubé, good friends with the first known victim, Skanda Navaratnam, worries about what lies ahead. I have a negative feeling that this isn't anywhere close to being done. In what way? The nightmare, it's gone in many cases for a lot of people because it's no longer a threat. But like a bad dream, it's gonna come back over and over again because we will find more. There's always going to be more evidence. There's always gonna be more to the story. And as police continue their investigation, Bruce MacArthur remains in custody. He has yet to enter a plea in court.